So section 10.4, we're going to add and subtract some radicals. Now, here's what you need to know about adding and subtracting. This is going to be very, very, very similar to doing things like this. Can you add those together? Yes. How much you get? 12 Wait, 12 what? 12 x. Oh, but that's the whole question I have for you. Do you get 12x or you, do you get 12x squared? 12x, okay. you're not multiplying. You're not multiplying, that's right. You have 5x's here, you have 7x's there, together you have 12x's. You don't have 12x squared, right? When you go to the grocery store and you get five apples, and you go, ah, I need more apples. So of course, everyone needs more apples. And you get seven apples, do you get 12 square apples? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, but no, it'd be easier to cut. But you don't, right? You still have 12 apples. You don't change the units just because you're adding things together. If you have $5 plus $7, you don't get $12 squared, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, so when we're adding, when you're combining like terms, you look at these coefficients. Because you're able to add these, or, I'm sorry, you are able to add these because you have an x and you have an x. If this was an x and that was a y, could you add them? No. If this was an x and that was an x squared, could you add them? No. Okay, if you keep that in mind, Adding and subtracting radicals are going to go very smoothly for you. Because what we're doing, adding and subtracting radicals is very similar to combining like terms. That right there would give us 12x. How about that one? Do I have any like terms to combine there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are these like terms? Can I combine no. those? No. no. But I can combine these. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? They both have x's. Okay, so not only are we talking about the same variable, we're talking about the same variable with the same exponent. So here we combine these ones and get seven, seven what? Seven Good. Okay. Here you combine these and you get Very good. That's combined like terms. We've done this a lot. We, we, we know how to do that. But we are going to draw some similarities. You see, here's the deal. When you're talking about combining like terms, you're looking for the same exact variable but it has to be raised to the same power. Here's what that means for us. In radicals, we're not just looking for the same exact root. That would be the same exponent. For instance, uh, a square. These are, have the same exponent, right? The radicals are exponents. So you're, you are looking for the same exponent, same type of root, square root with square root, cube root with cube root, square with a square, a one with a one. You with me on that? But also, you're looking for the same exact base. That's like the same variable. So if this was a y, could I combine those two things? No. That wouldn't make sense. You'd have a different base. In our case, what that means is not only does the root have to be the same, like a square with a square, the base has to be the same. Or in our case, the radicand. The radicand is the base. The re inside of the radical must be identical for you to add them and subtract them. So you have to have two things exactly the same. Same root, same radicand. Remember that. Let's look at this one. Remember, we're looking for two things here. We need the same root same radicand. Do you remember what that, that word radicand meant? Mm -hmm. I've been using it a lot up here. I had you go over a little while ago. Radicand was whatever's inside there is called your radicand. That's right. So we're, when we look at this, it is like my like terms. Instead of looking for a variable to a power, you're looking for the same root, same radicand. Do I have the same type of root here? Yes. Yeah. What I mean there is that's a square root. That's a square root. That's the same root. This, folks, is identical to looking at the exponent here. 
that's what you're doing. A root is an exponent. You really are looking at the exponent. You're just in a, in a root form. This would be 15 to the 1 half power. This would be 15 to the 1 half power. Are you with me? That's what that is. So you are looking at the exponent when you're talking about the same root. Now the same radicand, that's like having an x and an x to some power, or an x and an x. So we look for the same root because that's our exponent, same radicand because that's like our base here. So do we have the same root and the same radicand? Yeah. 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 Are we going to be able to add these things? Yeah. Now the question is, what do you get when you add this? I know I'm probably going to get like a 7, right? Probably going to get a 7. Just like here, I had a, a 5, I had a 7 that gave me 12, I get a 5 and a 2 that's giving me 7. The question is, what do I get out of the root 15 and the root 15? Well, we're going to go ahead and look back up here. When we added a 5x and 7x, did the x change at all? No. No, we didn't, we didn't change it. We didn't get x to the second, right? So we're not going to get like a fourth root. We're going to still have a square root. Also, it's very, it is still like this. You have five x's here and you have seven x's here. Together you have 12 x's. You have five root 15's, you have two root 15's. All together you have seven what's? It doesn't magically change to 30. It does not magically change to 30. That's a big mistake that people make. People think addition, in their heads they go, hey, this is kind of fun, seven root 30. <laughs> no, we can't do that, okay? You're, you're adding like you're doing like terms. You have five in one thing, you have seven in one thing, you have 12 in that same thing. You have five of this thing, you have two of this thing, you have seven. Did I say five and seven, you get seven still? Yeah. Oops. <laughs> you get 12. You have five of this thing, you have two of this thing, you get seven of that same thing. That would be root 15. You don't change the root and you don't change the radicand when you're adding. Okay, 9 cube root 2y minus 13 cube root 2y. The first thing you must check for if you're trying to combine these radicals is like combine like terms. What are you looking for in this case? Root. Okay, do we have the same root? Mm -hmm. That's like your exponent. That is your exponent. And we also have to look for the same radicand. Do we have the same radicand? Yes. Can I combine these things? Yes. The way we do that is just like combining like terms, you look at the coefficients. Here are the coefficients 9. Here are the coefficient. Remember, you include your sign here is negative 13. So, we just look at 9 minus 13. If you do that, you can do this. How much is that? Negative so we get negative 4. What's the rest of it? Q root. Q root. Still a Q root, root. okay. Of what? Perfect. That's it. That's it. It's kind of easier than you might have thought, right? I mean, really, as long as you have the same thing, you're not changing that. You're just adding or subtracting coefficients, just like you did with like terms. This is combined like terms, only now your terms are not x's or y's, they're roots. That's, that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and combine this one. How much are we going to get out of, out of that one? Wait a minute, why not? Well, wait, I still have a, I have a 10 and a 10, and there's a root around that. You mean I can't do that still? Oh, I see. So this would be like having a different power. It would be like trying to add these together. While the x's were the same, the powers were different, and you cannot combine those. We weren't able to combine these. We can't combine those, right? It's a different power. This is like having a different power. So in this case, what would you do? You leave it. That's what you're done. Okay, let's look at that one. Do I have the same type of root? Yes. So we've already we've eliminated the problem we had here. Do we have the same radicand? No. Okay, so am I going to be able to add those? No. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Not right now. However, I want you to look at that very carefully. I want you to look at the square root of 50 and the square root of 18 because that's what we have, right? 
can you simplify those? Yes. I, I sure hope so, because we just finished that section. If you can't, why well, I did not do my job right. right? We should be able to simplify those things. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that if you can't initially add them together, here if you look, that was simplified, that was simplified, that was simplified, that was simplified, and these were both simplified, as much as you could do. And that's why we could easily tell whether we could add them or not. Right? However, in this case, well, that one, I mean, the roots were different. There's no way you can add those. But in this case, we have the square root of 50. I know that 25 goes in that number. That's the square root of 18. I know that 9 goes in that number. We're looking for perfect squares. So I'm certainly going to be able to simplify those things. So before you say yes or no, whether you can add those or not, you better simplify them to make sure they're in the simplest form. That's why we spend all this time. If we hadn't done simplification, you look at that and go, no, I can't add those. When in fact, if we simplify them, we might be able to. So let's spend some time right now and simplify your radicals first. Let's simplify our radicals first. Square root of 50, as we already talked about, we're looking for perfect squares. I know 25 divides that number. I'm picking 25 because well, I'm not, not going to really spend a whole lot of time on this. We just did, just did that section. 25 because I can take a square root of that, and we're looking for perfect squares here. Plus, that 5 hangs out at the front. That 5 that hangs out there. Square root of 18. I know that's going to be what two numbers? Two, nine. Good. I'm going to write the 9 first because that's the number I'm going on. After that, we simplify. It's like two problems in one. Square root of 25, ladies and gentlemen. And how about 2? What's going to happen with that? So would you agree that out of this part, I get 5 root 2? Okay. Then add a plus 8. Don't lose that 5. This means 5 times whatever you, you're going to get. This means 5 times whatever you're going to get over here. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. What's the square root of 9? So we're going to have 5 times 3. And ultimately, that's what's going to happen. And then the square root of 2, I, I can't do anything with that, so I'm going to get the root 2. I'd like to see if you're okay on that. Raise your hand if you are. All right with that. Good, all right. Basically, just simplifying this one, simplifying this one. That gives that. Let's make this a little bit prettier before we try to combine these things. I know the 5 root 2 up here, that's as good as I can get. But here I have 5 times 3 root 2. How much does that give you? 15. Sure. 15. Does it change the root 2? This is not a distribution problem. This is all being multiplied together. So when you had 5 times 3x, you just put 15x, right? You're not going to do 15 root 10. That's not what we're doing. This is not distribution. This is just multiplication. You just multiply those numbers. If you think about this like like terms, if you think about your root like a variable, it's not a variable. Okay? But if you think about it like it's being treated like these numbers, it's a good stepping stone for you. It's similar. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Hey, can you combine those? Yes. Those are the same. I've got the same exact root. I've got the same exact radicand. I've got 5 here. I've got 15 here. Total I have how much? Square root of 2, yes? You sure? Yeah, that's exactly right. So we're simplifying those radicals first. A lot of times we're going to get the situation where we have similar or the exact same root, same radicand, we can add them together. Richard, go on. You sure? Questions on that one? Alright. Not ready to go on? Already? Question? No. You okay with it? <laughs> She's sandbagging. She's shaking her head. No, I'm not ready. She just doesn't want to go on. She wants to waste the last five minutes of class. I don't know what you're Shoot, we got seven minutes left. A lot of y'all coming two minutes late. I'm going to spend two minutes, two minutes extra. You're going to get your 50 minutes worth, I guarantee that. <laughs> All 
we're at? Oh my. Wow. First, let's see if we are maybe even going to be close to adding these things together. First thing you check for is the root. Okay, that, that might save you a lot of time. You're going to simplify it regardless, but at least you'll be able to know whether you might be able to add these two together or not. Uh, is the root satisfied, at least? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we have the cube root everywhere. That's great. Don't lose that three when working down. Now, the next thing, of course, our radicands are not even close to the same, so we're going to have to simplify these things first. Let's start with, let's start with the easy one. Can you simplify this one? No. Don't, please don't ever tell me that's one, okay? That's, that's <laughs> the only numbers that we can simplify in a cube are 8 and 27, 64, 125, and so on. So here, I know for sure I'm going to have a plus cube root of 3. Let's work on this cube root of 24 next. Cube root of 24, can you think of a perfect cube that goes into 24? Yeah, remember, we're dealing with cubes, right? The only numbers you can try are 8, 27, 64, and two of those are bigger. So only 8 would help us here. Well, I know it's 8 times 3. Minus 4 and then a cube root, oh my gosh, 192. But remember, there's only a couple numbers you can even check. You can check 8. You can check 27. You can check 64. Start with the big ones. Start with 64. Does 64 work? No. Yeah. Okay, try 27 then. Does 27 work? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Divide it. You get calculators. I don't. 64. Okay, 64 does work. Nobody was going to me. I thought it did. You scared me. <laughs> what, times three? Yeah. All right. So we break that up to 64 times three. It's kind of nice with the cubes, right? Because there's only a few of them you can check. If it's not 8, 27, 64, 125, well, you're done. That's kind of nice. So we're going to break that up. We got it. Now we simplify. Just be careful. Don't lose anything here. Don't lose your 4. Don't lose your cube root. What's the cube root of 8, ladies and gentlemen? 2. So I'm going to have 2 cube root 3, because there's nothing to do with that 3. Minus don't lose the 4. The 4 should be there regardless. Cube root of 8, can, or, sorry, cube root of 64. Mm -hmm. four. What is it, 8 or 4? Four. 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 It is 4. Yeah. <laughs> I said 8 because I saw that. I don't know why. But yeah, that, that's definitely 4. It's 4 times 4 times 4 gives you 64. So cube root of 64 is 4. And I have a cube root of 3 still inside of my radical, plus I've got this cube root of 3 out here at the back end. We're going to clean this up just a little bit and multiply anything that you can before you start combining your roots. So I know 2 cube root of 3, that's good to go. Minus, this gives you how much? 16. Good. 4 times 4 is 16. Cube root of 3 plus cube root 3. Can we add all those? Yep. We've got the same exact root, same exact radical. So yeah, we can. I don't know what we're going to get. Well, we can do this two at a time if you'd like. We've got 2 minus 16. Wait a minute. How much is this over here? 1. one. one. Don't forget that that's a 1. Okay, this actually counts. There's like a little one out front. We don't show it, but this is like having a single x. If you have a single x, it still counts for one x, doesn't it? So don't forget about this thing. If you did these two, sure, you're going to get negative 14 cube root of 3 plus cube root of 3. That's from here. Negative 14, no problem. But now that you have negative 14 plus 1 cube root of 3, you're going to get negative how much? 13. 13, very good. So don't let this thing fool you. Just because right there, that still counts. You still have to add or subtract one, depending on whether you have plus or minus. Let's try one more today, and then we will be done. We'll start on this next time. Now, we haven't had any variables yet. Well, except for the first one was already kind of done for us, so it's already simplified. But we can still simplify them the same way we would before. So if the power is bigger than the root, we can simplify it. If it's not, then we, we can't as far as the variable goes. The numbers will do the same exact way. So when we look at this thing, we've got square root, square root, square root. The roots are satisfied. We've got 20x, 16x, 45x. The radicands aren't. We need to simplify those first. So when we look at the 20x, can you tell me what number I'm looking at for 20, please, quickly? Five and four, or four and five, okay. So four times five X. 
I'm looking for 4 because it's a perfect square now. I'm looking for squares. Minus 6 times, okay, the 16. That's already a perfect square. I'm going to leave that to the next step. 16x is great. Plus, how about the 45? What goes into 45? 9 and 5. Great. Square 9 times 5x. Raise your hand if you're with me so far on this. Okay. Let's simplify. Can you all stick with me here? What's the square root of 4? 2. You agree I'm going to get 2 root 5x out of that? Yes. Okay. Minus 6. What's the square root of 16? 4. Watch carefully, please. We're going to have times 4. Then I have a square. What's inside the square root? X. X. Good. You okay with that, that that's 4 root x? Yeah. Lastly, I've got plus. This is going to give you 3 square root of 5x again. Let's do one more step. Multiply what we can. 2 root 5x minus 24 root x. Remember, we're multiplying 24. Plus 3 root 5x. Why can we only combine two of these? What's wrong? Okay. While we do have square roots everywhere, this one worked out to be a square root of x. This was a square root of 5x, this was a square root of 5x. So just like we had in the opening of this problem, you can only combine like terms, you can only combine like radicals. So we have a 2 root 5x, we've got a 3 root 5x. How many root 5x do I have? 5 root 5x. 5. That takes care of these ones. Then at the back end, I still have a minus 24 root x. Hey, one question, can I combine these and get like uh, negative 19 square root of 4x? No, no you can't. You, you can't do that with like terms, you can't do it with like radicals. This is as much as we can do. How many people feel pretty good about what we talked about so far? All right, good. We're talking still about how to add, subtract, and we're going to get to how to multiply some radical expressions. We're dealing with stuff like this. Something like the cube root of 8y to the fifth plus the cube root of 27 y to the fifth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we're trying to add roots, what do we have to look for in order to determine that we can actually add these things? Okay, you've got to have the same root. Very good. Someone else tell me what else do you have to have? Right, radicand, and that's like a base. What we're doing is we're, we're very much like combining like terms because these things technically are like terms. They have an exponent, remember a root is an exponent, and they have a base, or in our case a radicand. So we really are trying to combine like terms. What do we have to do first though before we start trying to combine them? Firstly, are these combinable the way they are? No. no. Well, why not? We have the same root. Radicands. Oh, the radicands are different. You must have the same root and the same radicand. We talked about that yesterday. So the first thing we need to do before we start combining that is check to see what? Simplify. Simplify. Let's simplify. Why don't you go ahead and do that right now? Let's simplify those two roots. We should know exactly how to do that. If you finish that one quickly, if you simplify that quickly, uh, well, we're going to put it together. But then we're going to start these two problems too. So if you're already done, maybe start those right now. Okay, so looking at the example I'm having to simplify, 
we're dealing with what type of root here? Cube. So we're going to look for perfect cubes inside of that. That's how we simplify. We've been doing this now for about, what, three or four sections. So we should be pretty good at this. We're looking for perfect cubes inside of my root because we have a cube root. Well, first of all, I know that 8 is a perfect cube. That's great. So I don't have to change 8 at all because I know the cube root of 8 is 2. That's fantastic. I don't have to break that number up. So I'm going to leave that as an 8. However, y to the fifth, the power is bigger than the root, and we know that any time the power is bigger than the root, I can simplify that. How am I going to write y to the fifth so that I can simplify it, folks? Y, 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 y cubed. Times? Y squared. Perfect. That's exactly right. Same situation over here. 27 is a perfect cube. I know the cube root of that is 3. That's great. I don't have to change 27. However, the y to the fifth, yeah, I need to write that as y cubed times y squared as well. Did you make it that far, folks? Now's a good part. We need to cross some stuff out. So when we do this, simplification shouldn't really be the hard part. In fact, it, th this is a combination of two ideas we know how to do already. We know how to combine like terms. We know how to simplify. We're just doing it now at the same time. Cube root of 8 gives you 2. Cube root of y cubed gives you y. However, the cube root of y squared, the power is now less than the root. I cannot simplify that anymore. So I've got the cube root of y squared. Give me a head nod if you got that one right. Okay, good. Now, next up, I still have this plus. Cube root of 27 gives you 3. Cube root of y cubed gives you y. But then I also have this y squared, so a cube root of y squared. Raise your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. Now, can we combine these radicals? Yeah. We're looking at two places, actually. We're looking not only at the root and the radicand, but we're also looking at this variable. Those variables, that stands for like terms as well, right? So you've got to have the same exact variable to the same power. So here, basically, everything besides your number has to be identical. Everything besides this 2 and this 3 has to be the same. These, this 2 and the 3 stands for our coefficient. We know that these right here are perfectly the same. They're like terms. That means we can combine them. So even if you have some variables up front, if they're still the same, you can still add or subtract those things together. You with me on that? Okay, so how much are we going to get out of this? Okay, and the way you'd say that is 5y cube root of y squared. 5y cube root of y squared. So nothing else changes besides that coefficient. Let's go like that. I want, to, I want you to try these two on your own. So we're simplifying these roots. Go all the way down. Make sure we can add them together if you can. If you can simplify them, add them together. Do that. I'll be walking around. If you need help on this, raise your hand let me know. So we're simplifying each radical individually. Then we're looking to see if we have like radicals. That's the same root, same radicand. After that, we try to add or subtract them depending on the signs. But we're just adding and subtracting the coefficients once we get those like radicals. We're going to start on the first one in just a bit. Give about 30 more seconds for the first one. We need to think of a perfect square that could be perfect. Square.
Okay, so let's look at our first example up here. Now, what type of roots are we dealing with? Is this common root, is that satisfied for this problem? No, they, all have, they all have square roots, that's great. So at least we have square roots everywhere. That means potentially we could combine these radicals. If we didn't have square roots, if we had like a square root, a cube root, and like a fourth root, we could do anything with this thing. We wouldn't be able to add those together. You with me on that? Okay. Well, okay, so next up, we gotta simplify these because right now we know we can't add them together or subtract them. We certainly can't take 75x minus 27x. That, that doesn't work at all. We gotta have exactly the same radical exactly the same radicand to be able to combine these just like we would any other like terms. When we combine these, what type of root are we dealing with again? So unlike the last example that I erased, we're not looking for perfect cubes anymore, we're looking for perfect squares, it's like 4, 9, 16, 25, those numbers. So can you give me in the square root of 75x a perfect square that goes into 75? Good. A number you can take square root of, that's 25. So I know that we got 25 times 3x. How about the x? Can I simplify the x at all? No. Oh, the power is 1, the root is 2, the power is less than the root. We can't do anything with that. So this is, this is much we're going to be able to simplify is that 25 minus 3. Well, the 3 is going to stay there. What is that 3 doing next to that root? What's that mean? Okay, so we're going to leave that hanging out till the very end. We just know it's 3 times whatever else we get. Now the 27x. What number goes into 27 that you can take a square root of? Because we have a square root. Good, okay. And lastly, we got 12. Is there a square that goes into 12? Four times three. Okay. Yeah, the reason why we're doing this, we can take the square root of 25 and 9 and 4. That's going to help us simplify that. Now it's a good part, we get to cross this stuff out. So we're going to cross out 25 and put a what, folks? And the 3x, I can't do anything with that. That's not a perfect square. The power's less than the root here, so I'm going to get the square root of 3x. Minus, I do have a 3 out here being multiplied. That 3 is going to be there being multiplied by whatever else I get. Now the square root of 9 gives you a 3. But again, I get a square root of 3x. Plus, square root of 4, I know that thing is 2. And lastly, I get a square root of 3x. What's the next thing we're supposed to do? Multiply. Yeah, we're going to multiply. Before we combine our like radicals, we are going to multiply. I want to make sure we get this number right, so we're not mistakenly subtracting 3 or 6 or something crazy. Okay. <coughs> so, of course, we get our 5 square root of 3x. We get, how much does that give you? Yeah, good. We are multiplying here, right? Those are... Multiplication problem. We have 5 square root of 3x minus 9 square root of 3x plus 2 square root of 3x. Can we combine all of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. Notice if we would have got one thing different, like if that was like a, a 2x or a 5x, we would have been able to combine the first two but not the last one. We've seen a problem like that in here before, I think yesterday we saw one. How much are you going to get? Negative 2x. Square root of? 3x. 3x. Okay, so that, that root doesn't change, just like, like terms don't change. We're just basically adding the coefficients of those things. And you said negative 2? Yeah. Exactly. So negative 2, square root of 3x, that's your final answer, as far as you can go on that problem. So combining all this together, you get something that looks nothing like it, do you? Now, if you, if you just look at those numbers, the coefficients of 1, negative 3, and 1, well, you're, you're not going to get negative 2. If you look at this and add those together, you're certainly not going to get square root of 3x. So what you start with doesn't even come close to describing what you end with. We really have to do the simplification, then look at how to combine those. Okay, the next one, we're not dealing with a square root anymore, we're dealing with a cube root. So the way we're looking at this, we're going to try to find perfect, not squares, not squares, perfect cubes. So this problem actually tricks a lot of people. It's not meant to, but it does. Because you know what a lot of people do here? They go, oh, I don't have to deal with 81. If I cross it out, it's going to give me a 9. See how they can fall in that habit, though, right? It's not correct. I mean, the, the cube root of 81 is not 9. The square root of 81 is. Right? But we're not dealing with the square root. We're dealing with the cube root. So we're trying to look for a perfect cube that actually divides 81. So if you put 9 here, you just cross it out and put 9, that's not the way to go. We're not dealing with the square root. Actually, what we have is a cube root of, let's, let's talk about 81. Can you think of a number that you can take a cube root of that 
goes into 81, there's only a couple choices. There's H, 27, 64, which one? 27 times 3 gives you 81. Now the x to the fourth, can we simplify the x to the fourth? x times 3 times x. x to the what now? Times x. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to work because I know the power now matches the root. Don't forget about this 3. Power now matches the root. This is still x to the fourth. We've done this several times now. Now let's work on the next one. How about this? How about that 3? Can I bring out that 3? No. Okay, so there's nothing I can do with that. Cube root of 3 is, I don't know, we're going to leave it. There's not a perfect cube that goes into that number besides 1, and 1 really doesn't help us out at all. x to the fourth, though, we're going to be able to do the same thing. We're going to do x cubed times x. So really, we're just simplifying like you did a couple homeworks ago. Just that simplification process two times. Then we're looking to see if we're going to have any like radicals, and then we start adding or subtracting them. Okay, everybody, cube root of 27, what do we get? That's going to go outside the radical. Cube root of 3, what do we get? It stays inside. Okay, so I'm going to circle it. Anything I circle stays inside my root. Cube root of x cubed, what do we have? And the cube root of x? Stays inside. Oh, we're going to circle it. Okay. Don't forget that you do, in fact, have a cube root. You've got to have that. What's left inside of my cube root? Yeah, that's exactly what we have circled, right? What we couldn't take out, what we couldn't simplify, we leave. Now over here, we have a different situation. We don't have any numbers that can pull out of our root. All we have is a 3, which we can't do anything with. We've got an x cubed, which we can. That gives you an x. But then we have an x, which we can't do anything with. So inside of the radical, you have a cube root of 3x again. So we've simplified pretty much two problems in one. We know how to do this pretty well. We know how to do this pretty well. And now we look to see if we can add or subtract these. Can you add those together? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, have, we have exactly the same thing here. We have the same like terms. We have an x and an x to the first power. Cube root, cube root, 3x, 3x is our radicand. That's identical except for the coefficients. That's what we want to have happen. That's how we combine like terms, or in this case, like radicals. We have a coefficient of 3. We have a coefficient of 1. So when you add those together, you should be getting 4 out of that. So this does count for something. So 4x cube root of 3x, that's your final answer as far as you can go. Raise your hand if you feel okay with this so far. Okay, good, all right. Now, you know I was going to do it to you. How do you deal with some fractions? How do you deal with some fractions? Oh my. Can you deal with fractions? Yeah. Sure. And you're basically, you're just subtracting fractions, right? What do you need in order to add or subtract fractions? <laughs> Great. Yeah, you, you need one. Now, before you rush off and go ahead and find your common denominator, what I'd like you to do is simplify your radicals first. Okay? This, this, is not, this is not the same thing as what we did yesterday where we combined our radicals because there's no radicals on the denominator. Otherwise, that's exactly what we would be doing. Are you with me on that? If you have those two radicals, sure, combine them first. If you don't, in this case we have a radical here, no radical here. We can't combine. There's no, nothing to combine. Radical here, no radical here. There's nothing to combine. Okay. If there were two radicals, absolutely, you would make that one radical first and try to simplify your fractions. Right here, what you can't do, you cannot combine this under one radical because that one doesn't even have a radical. Not just if you are with that. So in this case, yeah, we, we're certainly going to simplify these these roots. Well, this one, we can, but the square root 75, we actually did that earlier in this class today. That's going to be, if you think about that, that's 25 times 3, that's 5 root 3. You with me on that? So we're going to simplify that as 5 root 3. Five root three over nine minus root three over two. If you're not getting how I'm getting five root three, this is the twenty-five times three. We take the square root of twenty-five, that gives you the five, and then we have the root three. So do do this step, we've done that a couple times. Make sure we can get five root three out of that. Am I okay to add or subtract these now? Okay, so let's think on our own. Don't say it out loud, but think of the common denominator you're gonna have. What is the common denominator? Okay. 
just like you added and subtracted fractions in pre-algebra. Teaching that right now in another class, how to do exactly this. What do you do in order to get 18? Uh, Wait, just two? Like that? Okay, what we're really doing is multiplying by one, right? Just doing it in a very fancy way. Two over two still makes one. That means you're changing not the value of the function, just the way it looks. We're purposely unsimplifying this fraction so as to get a common denominator. That's what we're doing. So two over, well not two, sorry, I said one and I wrote one. I meant two over two gives you one. Hopefully you didn't write down the one. That was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Two over two here, and here we're getting what? Yeah, that's going to give us 18, 18, exactly what we want it to be. So we're going to have to multiply these things. I want you to, to look back up here. We talked about this earlier. When you multiply 2 times 5 root 3, do you multiply the 2 times the 5, the 2 times the 3, or both the 2 times the 5 and the 2 times the 3? Two times the five, five, five. Not the 3? No. no, it's like multiplying 2 times 5x. You just do 2 times 5, and then you, you have that x. Very much like a like term, okay? Or with a, a variable. So we would get 10 root 3, not 10 root 6, not 10 root 6, over 18, and then minus 9 root 3. Notice this. I want you to really pay attention because I'm going to talk about this in about maybe 10... Maybe. When you're doing the root 3 times 9, do you notice that we don't get root 27? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? In order to get root 27, you'd have to have a square root around that thing. That would give you square root of 27. We talked about that, right? That's the using the product rule, putting together roots. In order to put together roots and get root 27, well, you have to have both of them being roots. Otherwise, if you don't, like we don't here, this is like x times 9. You're getting 9x. You put the 9 in front, you have 9 root 3 in this case. Over 18. That's the way we deal. That's the way we deal with these uh, these fractions. <coughs> okay, now that we have a common denominator, what common denominators say is that you're going to combine your fractions. Your denominator is going to be how much? Yeah, when we add or subtract, we don't change the denominator. On the numerator, we do it just like any other fractions. We have our first numerator, whatever that sign is, our second numerator, and then we try to simplify. Can you combine those roots? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got 10 root 3 minus 9 root 3. Do we have the same root? Yep. Do we have the same radicand? Mm -hmm. Because you can combine them. Mm -hmm. We just do 10 minus 9. How much do you get? 1. 1 what? Root 3. So we're going to get root 3 over 8. We don't have to put the 1. It's like saying 1x. But we would get 1 root 3. So we're going to put root 3 <laughs> over 18. Notice how simplifying your, your radical here really helped you. Already had a, a common radical. That way you just multiply your numbers, your coefficients, and that really helps. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have to simplify this at some point. Somewhere you're going to have to do that. So I know it's confusing. The first, the first thing we did when you had a radical over a radical, we didn't simplify first. We combined them first. That's always what you do when you have a radical over a radical. However, if you don't, then sure, go ahead and simplify that because there's nothing you're going to have to combine later. It's just that one root. I hope you'll feel alright with this so far. Okay, one last question for you. Can I simplify this and get square root of 1 over 6? Does that work? No. Square root of 1 over, can I just go 1 over 6? No. If I had a root over a root, sure, I could combine them, and that would make that fraction, but I don't. Okay, so I cannot just simplify within a root unless I have that other root to combine it with. Shall we try one more? Yes, please. I like it. <laughs> yes, please, may I have some more math? Absolutely, you may. <laughs> I have an abundance of math to give. No shortage here. No shortage. Cube root of 5x over 27, that's one cube root of a fraction, plus four cube root of 5x. Oh my gosh, what in the world do we do now? Firstly, do I even have two fractions here? No. Kind of, sort well, of, five over one. I guess. I guess. This looks like a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. 
In fact, I, I know that with this, I could break this up as a cube root of 5x over, over what? The cube root of 27. Good, the cube root of 27. Not just 27, right? Because we know it's cube root of both the numerator and denominator. Cube root of 27. Great. Plus, but wait a minute. How do I make this a fraction? Let's put it over 1. We can always change something to a fraction by putting this over 1. Now I've got two fractions. Now I do. I can change this into the cube root of the numerator over cube root of the denominator, no problem. I can always put an expression over 1 and change it into a fraction. Now, before we do anything more, we're supposed to simplify these things. We split this up, but that's just because I know what the cube root of 27 is. And I want to make sure I can find a common denominator here. And it's real hard to find the, the common denominator when you have a cube root, right? What's the common denominator? I don't know. Cube root of 27? It's kind of hard to deal with. Can we do the cube root of 27, though? Okay. Three. We can do three. Three's a lot easier to deal with than the cube root of 27. So instead of the cube root of 5x, we look to simplify that too. We can't. Cube root of 5 we look to simplify that. We can't. We're going to have the cube root of 5x over 3 plus 4 cube root of 5x over 1. Folks, give me a little head nod if you can make it down that far. Feel right with that. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you need to do next? Multiply the second fraction. Do it. Find me a common denominator. Multiply what you have to. Combine your your fractions. Go ahead and do that now. Did you do it? As I was writing? Okay. LCD? Three. Okay, clearly three. It's only the number we got. This piece of gold besides one. So we would multiply this by three over three. This we don't need to multiply anything. So we're going to have the cube root of 5x over three plus. Now what happens here? We have three over three. I know for a fact the denominator is going to be three. That's the easy part. Three times one is three. What does that three get multiplied by? The four. Not this one? No, just this one. So we should have, on your paper, 12 cube root 5x. Did you get that? Okay, the next thing that we're supposed to do is make one fraction out of this thing. So when we do that, of course we'll have a 3 on the denominator. We don't actually add denominators. We just keep them the same when we're adding fractions. We've got a cube root of 5x plus 12 cube root of 5x. Are they combinable? Yeah, we get exactly the same root, exactly the same radicand. We get a cube root, great. Radicand's 5x. We got 12 of them here. How many do we have here? So all together, how much you got? 13. Cool. Cube root's 5x over 3. That's as good as we can do. 13 cube root of 5x over 3. Ladies and gentlemen, would you raise your hand feel okay adding and subtracting these radicals? Cool. So our idea are simplify, get like radicals, then we just add them by the coefficients or subtract them by the coefficients. We're going to move on to multiply, and I want to talk about this a little bit. Do you remember how to do problems like this? This, this is all like a refresher. We've done every one of these problems so far in this class. I just want to make sure that we're, we're okay with it. Firstly, how would you do this problem? Okay, so 3 goes to the 2, 3 goes to the x, you would get... 3 times 2 plus 3 times x. True? Mm -hmm. Generally, we don't even show that step. We usually just go 6 plus 3x. Cool. And the next one, what would you do there? Which is a fancy word for distribute. When you have two terms times two terms. So same idea. 
So if I were to distribute, you'd get x squared. x squared. Good, because you're doing x times x, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, we get a minus 2x and a plus 3x and a minus 6. Are you okay with where those numbers are coming from? And then you combine any like terms that you had. You okay with the x squared, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you do the x, x squared and the, this minus 2x, plus, are you going to get minus x or minus x squared? Which one? Mm -hmm. Minus x or minus x squared, which do you think? Plus x. Plus x. Plus x. Or plus x. <laughs> 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 yeah. Did I confuse wow. you? Yeah, I guess I'm the one that's a little off today. <laughs> Yeah, I'm plus like, x, what I meant to say. I'm questioning myself today. Hmm? I'm questioning myself today. Are you? Yes, but yeah, a little bit. Wait a second. You, you is Mr. Litter right? He is the math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Two over the one, and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, so when we, when we combine this, we're certainly not getting the x squared, though. That's my point. We don't get an x squared. We leave that, the x one alone. I showed you something like that earlier today, right? <laughs> where, where, we, where we talked about that. That was important. Can't combine any of this. We're done. Now, what we're going to do is combine the ideas of distribution, because that is multiplication after all, it's just multiplying, with our roots. Before we do that, though, I want you to really focus on if this idea is different than this idea. Do we do a different thing here? Yep. In this case, when we have two roots, the product rule says the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 have had the same exact roots. I can actually make that the square root of 3 times 5 or get the square root of 15. That's what I can do. If I have the same root, I can multiply them. Now in this case, and this by the way works because you're, you're basically using an exponent rule here. This is 3 to the 1 half and 5 to the 1 half, and so you're putting that under the same parentheses as 3 times 5 to the 1 half. It's using, uh, I don't remember the, the actual number of the rule, but it is a rule on your exponents. Uh, so that's, that's why this works. Now the square root of 2 times 5, not the square root of 5, just 5, can I put those under the same root? No. If I had the root, sure. If I had the root, absolutely. But I don't. This is saying 5 times of the square root of 2. Or in other words, the square root of 2 added it to itself 5 times. <coughs> square root of 2 plus 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 square root of 2. That's 1, 2, 3. That's 5 square root of 2. That's all you can do. You do not get the square root of 10. Although oftentimes that's the mistake I will see on your test is a lot of people will give me this right there. Because you're going fast. You know, you're trying to do this and this, and it's confusing when you're doing both right next to each other to get one right and get the other one wrong, uh, get, get them both right. Because they look similar, the only thing that this is missing is a square root, right? And people in their head, you want to go, oh, we're multiplying, that's 10. Yay! Okay. <laughs> not so much, not so much. You can be very careful. Follow those rules that we're talking about in this class. Now let me show you how this is applied to the problems we're going to be doing. Does this look similar to one of the problems I gave you over here? One of these problems? First one or second one? First one. First one. First one. Definitely the first one. We have that single term distribution. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but I want you to do this. <laughs> well, actually, I want you not to do something. Don't do it in your head. Okay, do it in your head. A lot of people would give me the square root of 12 if I asked you to do that in your head. Because your head thinks, your head thinks it's a weird thing to say, right? Your head thinks square root of 12, because you're multiplying. That's not what we're doing. What we're actually doing is the square root of 2 times 6 plus, of course, the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. I'm having you write it out like that because hopefully that's going to show you that that is exactly like these two problems I've just shown you. Exactly the same. You're just doing two problems in one here. One of them you can multiply together into the same root. One of them you can't because you don't have two roots. Which one can you multiply together under the same root, the first term or the second term? So here we get something plus the square root of 20. Sure. Here we would get not the square root of 12. What are you going to get? Six square root of 2. Okay. 
Who's going to feel alright with that so far? Okay, now, are you done? If I ask that question, probably not. Right, probably not. Why not? Well, this is this looks great. Six root two. This one doesn't look so great. Why? You can always simplify it. So that's why we cover simplification first. If you simplify the square root of twenty, I'm going to do some of these in my head. I'm going to start doing these the, just the numbers in my head. What number goes into the square root of twenty that you take the square root of? So four times five, you're going to get two root five. Do you see it? So out of out of here. Square root of 4 times 5, that's going to give you 6 square root 2 plus 2 square root 5. The last thing you check for is if you can actually combine those. That's what we just covered is, is addition. Can you combine them? No. Square roots, check. 5 and 2 can. can't do it. That's as far as you can go. So that's your expression. Let's do a couple more. I'll give you maybe two to do on your own and we'll be good to go. I gotta warn you, we're dealing with a lot of different rules here, right? In this chapter, exponent rules. These are technically exponent rules, but, but they look different. So you're, you're having a lot of things to do. I mean, take my advice to heart. Really start going back and studying this before your test. Not the night before, like the week before. You need that time. <laughs> what? When's the test? <laughs> no. Two weeks. So now? No. No, no. Next, Next week? We I mean, yeah. I mean, Take yes. weeks. <laughs> Did I just say no? Don't say oh, no. I would never say that. Uh, no, but if you're if you're not gonna if you're gonna study for just a certain period of time, I, mean, I have told you to spiral this information, right? I mean, review it every once in a while. Oh, yeah, erase this square root. I'm sorry, erase that. I have told you to spiral it in, so look back at old material every once in a while. That's a really good idea, actually. Okay, so this one, instead of looking like a first example, we actually look at our, our second example here. We have a FOIL situation. We're going to distribute these just like we would anything else with two terms, but we've got two terms that are not combinable. So when we FOIL this, let's watch carefully what happens. Don't distribute it in your head. Write it out. Write it out and make sure it looks like this. Because that way you, you're going to clue yourself into, oh, here I can combine them. Here I can't. When I distribute, let's do this together, I'm going to get the square root of what? I said don't do it in your head. Square root 3 times square root 2. Good. Write that out. Write that out. The next thing I'm going to do is multiply the root 3 times the 7. Am I going to get a plus or a minus? Plus. Root 3 times 7. Root 3 times, don't mistakenly create square roots here. That's a 7, stays a 7. Next thing I'm going to get is what? A plus or a minus? Minus. Minus, minus what? Square root of 5. Uh-huh. Square root of 2. Don't speed through this. And lastly, we've got a minus again. And what? Root 3, root 2, no problem. Plus root 3 times 7, no root. Minus root 5 times root 2, both roots. Don't lose roots either. Minus root 5 times positive 7, right there, no root. Are you okay on where this is coming from? So I'm not doing anything in my head, I'm just writing it out. I'm just writing it out. That way I can look at this and do this as four really simple, easy problems. We've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. Can I make that the square root of 6 or not? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Plus, square root of 3 times 7. Can I make that the square root of 21 or not? No. No, that is actually 7 root 3. Minus. I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 2. Can I make that the square root of 10 or not? Yes. yes. And then minus, I have the square root of 5 times 7. The square root of 35 or not? No. No, that is actually... That's it. 75. Give me the head nod if you're okay getting down to there. It's not hard work. It's just you got to, I mean, all we do is multiplying simple numbers, right? Distributing, multiplying simple numbers. But it's remembering what you can do and what you can't do that's hard. Combined with all the other stuff you've covered in this chapter. Okay, that's, that's what gets tricky, is remembering how to do that. Now we try to simplify. Can you simplify that one? Nope. That one? Nope. That one? Nope. Can I combine any of them? No. 
Square root of 6, square root of 3, square root of 10, square root of 5. You're done. As far as you can go. No combining here. There's no like radicals. This one's going to be interesting. Pay close attention to this one we're about to do. Firstly, of course I can FOIL and distribute this thing. Of course, I, of course we can. And we're going to write everything out. So stick with me here, ladies and gentlemen. When we distribute, we get the square root of 5y times the square root of 5y. Here we're going to have minus the square root of 5y times 2. Are you okay with that one? No. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, no. No, why not? Negative 2. Why not? Minus What's a positive times oh, negative? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to have plus 2 times square root of 5y. When you were taught distribution, hopefully your teacher taught you that the signs take care of themselves. You treat these like positive and negative numbers, and you can multiply mm -hmm. them together as such. Because you can write this as plus and negative. That's what you Okay, and then lastly, you're going to have positive 2 times negative 2. You're going to get minus 4. Do you see where the minus 4 is coming from? Mm -hmm. That one I'll let you do in your head, okay? If you have number times a number, you do that. Everything else, write that Raise your hand if you're okay getting this far. Good. Now we're going to simplify what we can and see what we can find anything. What's a square root of 5y times a square root of 5y? Square root of 25y squared. Or okay. 20. Great. Yeah. Now I want you to notice this. Right. The square root, <laughs> square root of 25, you're right. Okay. <laughs> square root of 25. Uh, but I want you to see something. Watch on the board. This is kind of important for you. I'm going to do this another way besides the square root of 25y squared. You can write that if you want. Square root, square root of 25y squared. But think about this. You have the square root of 5y times the square root of 5y. That's 5y times 5y, right? Mm -hmm. That's the square root of 5y squared. Do you see it? Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. You're multiplying something times itself. You're going to get that thing squared. What's a square root and square do? You get what? In fact, if you think of the square root of 25y squared, Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of y squared is y. You get 5y back again. Here's an important concept for you. Whenever you multiply a square root times itself, now this, I, I get to make something real clear. Just pay attention for a second. This does not work for the cube root. It doesn't work for the fourth root, or a fifth root, or a sixth root, or any other type of root. But for a square root, if you multiply a square root times itself, here's what's going to happen. And if you think about it, here's why it doesn't happen for a cube root or a fourth root. If you multiply something times itself, that radicand is being squared, right? Every time, if you multiply it by itself. If the radicand is squared, a power matches with the root. Now, I want you to think of the cube root. If you multiply a cube root times itself, the inside is still being squared, not cubed. The power will not match the root. Are you with me on that? So this only works for a square root. But for a square root, if you multiply a square root times itself, you get the, the radicand. That's what's going to happen here. So this expression gives you 5 why? times self equals the radicand. Let's go ahead and finish this problem off. We don't have much more to do. Firstly, raise your hand if you're okay that that's it actually equals 5y. Yes, no. Guys over here, yes or mm -hmm. no? Okay. So we're multiplying times itself. You're getting the square root of something squared. The square root of the square will simplify out. You get the radicand, just 5y. You actually don't even need to show your work on that. Square root times itself gives you the radicand every time. Mind How much is this going to be, ladies and gentlemen? Square root of 10y or 2 square root of 5y? Yes. Isn't that a difference of square? Well, we're going to talk about that in a second. So 2 square root of 5y. We have 2. Well, here we can't even multiply that. That's plus 2 square root of 5y. And lastly, this minus 4. Now, something interesting happens. Something real interesting happens. This happens every single time you have, look up here, same expression, different signs. We talked about that earlier in this class in like chapter 7, or actually before chapter 7 in review. Whenever you have those different signs, 
your middle terms will simplify out. Because look at, you got minus and plus, the same exact expression. They're like radicals, you could combine them. These things are gone. You're going to get 5y minus 4. That's your answer. That's it. Not even a square root. Every single time, every single time that you have this, this is called a conjugate. We'll talk about conjugates later on. Uh, and every time you have a conjugate, that radical will simplify out. One last thing I want to show you, just for briefly, we're not going to actually do this, but if you wanted to do this problem, what would you do first? Write it out. Okay, what I can't have you do is go, oh, this is 3 minus 49, or 3 plus 49. That's not the correct thing. Of course, we'd have to write this out as a square root of 3 minus 7 times the square root of 3 minus 7. Hey, will the middle terms cancel here ultimately? No. You don't have different signs. You now have enough to do your homework. Uh, I won't make it due on Monday. Okay, what I'm, we have about three more examples I want to show you. They'll take maybe five minutes. But you have enough to do the whole thing. So I would recommend you do that because you will have another assignment on Monday. And remember that we're talking about how to simplify these radical expressions, specifically how to multiply them. Now, there's one thing we learned last time before we left. On this type of example, can I just square this part and square that part and be okay? Now we actually have to write this thing out as what it means, and this means 5 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 2 times that same thing. So whenever you're faced with a problem like this where it says whatever power that is, write it out first and then we'll distribute. So remember, when we do stuff like this in our head, that's where the mistakes come in. The more steps we can write out throughout this chapter, the better off you're going to be. So in our case right here, instead of dealing with that in our heads, we're going to write it out as... what this actually means. This times itself. Okay, right side of the room. Are my middle terms going to simplify out of this expression, do you think? What do you think? Why not? Yeah, they're, they're both pluses. So we're actually not going to be able to simplify any of these radicals away, like a difference of squares, or that, that term I told you last time was a conjugate. We're going to get to that later today. Um, how, how would we do this problem? What are you going to do here now? Distribute. Yeah, let's distribute that. We're going to go slowly. When we distribute, we're going to write out everything that we have. We're not going to do any of this in our head. So, the first thing we'll notice when we do our FOIL, which is our, our shortcut for distribution here, well not shortcut, but the way we remember how to do distribution here. The first thing we'll do is 5 square root of x plus 1 times 5 square root of x plus 1. This is, look, look up here at the board. This right here is our first term, this entire expression. And this is our first term, our entire expression. Are you with me on that? So here's our first and our second, first and our second. So 5 root x plus 1 times 5 root x plus 1. Then what's going to happen is we're going to have 5 root x plus 1 times 2. Plus another, you don't want to move that down here. Is it okay? Are you guys going to be able to follow me if I move this second part down here? Are you sure? So I have one, two, my three, four is going to be right down here. So plus two times five, square root of x plus one. And then lastly, I'm going to get a plus four. Okay, you stick with me if, if you're. You're here. Let's stick, stick with it here. Are you guys okay on getting this part, firstly? Not sure just know. So this is just right there. That's this expression. I'm not doing any math in my head at all. Okay, I do not want you to do that. I want you to write this stuff out. At least that way you have the distribution correct. Once we start doing this in our head, that's where we're going to start making mistakes. We, we can't have that happen. So this part, right there. This part, the 5 root x plus 1 times 2, remember that's a positive times a positive, I should get a plus out of that. There's our 5 root x plus 1 times 2. You okay with that part? Then we got a couple more. We got this guy, 2 times 5 times root x plus 1, that's, that's right here. Again, a positive times a positive gives us a plus. And 2 times 2, that's our, our 4 over here. Raise your hand if you're alright with that. Now we start going piece by piece and figuring out what we can do 
and what we can't do. Now, the first expression, this is kind of the most important one for you, the 5 root x plus 1 times 5 root x plus 1, you need to know what you can multiply and what you get out of this thing. So firstly, do you understand that when you look at this, it's 5, I'm getting some people zoning out already, you need to be zoning in on this thing right here. When you have 5 root x plus 1, it actually means 5 times. You guys with me on that? And this means 5 times. So basically, if you think about the community, commutativity of multiplication, it's this times this times this times that. All four of those things multiply together. Basically, this says I can multiply my fives together and get 25. It says I can multiply my root x plus 1's together. What's a square root times itself? I gave you the last bit of class yesterday. It's what now? So it's... Not the 5, because we're going to get 25 out of that. Good. Good. The square root times itself gives you the radicand. And that's the thing that you need to get stuck in your head. The square root times itself gives you the radicand. Does it work other than a square root? No. Not cube roots. But if you think about this, this will give you the square root of x plus 1 squared. Do you see it? The square and the square root are going to simplify out of that expression. So this whole thing right here is going to give you 25 because we have 5 times 5. The square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1 is going to give you x plus 1. You okay with that? Now, I've made one major mistake on this problem right now. Yeah. Well, no, there's no square root. There's no square root because of this. Uh, I'm going to write down here so you can see this one last time. I'm not going to show this ever again. But if you have the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1, which that is exactly what you have here. Do you understand if I, if I reassociate those? This is the square root of x plus 1 squared. Believe me? Boom. x plus 1. However, it must be in parentheses. Do you follow that? That's the last thing I showed you on Friday, last Friday. So while we don't have a square root here, we've taken care of the square root. That's what that does. We do have to have some parentheses because 25 is getting multiplied by that entire expression. Nod your head if you're still with me. Okay. Moving on. Now the rest of this shouldn't be all that bad. This is the hardest part for you. This is where most people make mistakes is on this first expression right there. What they usually do is they'll give me 25 square root of x plus 1. <coughs> they'll still have a square root. Are you going to have a square root? Now, if you multiply a square root times itself, that's got to do something, right? It's got to change your expression somehow. You can't just give me the same thing over again. That'd be like going, oh, this is this. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. It's actually a square. It changes something about it. Okay, moving on. Now, let's look at this expression right here. Tell me what that's going to be. Do I distribute the 2 inside my radical? No. So how much is this expression? 10. 10 plus 10. I still have a square root on that one, don't I? Because I haven't multiplied by a square root there. Okay, so I have 25x plus 1. Where does the square root go? You multiply it a square root times itself. That gets rid of that radical. I showed you why down here about 10 seconds ago. Here, the 2 gets multiplied by our, our term. There's no root here. It cannot go inside the other root. Same thing happens here. It's, a, it's an exact same expression. I just have the 2 in front of my 5 instead of behind my root. So I get plus another 10 square root of x plus 1. And lastly, I have that plus 4 hanging on to the back end. <coughs> I did a show of hands making sure you can follow me down that far. Now, i got to warn you. I'm doing this. I know what I'm doing. Uh, when, when you're doing this on your own, I need to make sure that you can actually do this. I need to make sure you can do that. So practice this on your own when you get to do things like this. I know you've had homework on it. Uh, I'm hoping that you did it this way. If you didn't, you need to go back on that homework. That's why it's not due today. It's due on Wednesday. Go back on the homework and fix some of this stuff up if you did not do that. Okay? You need to go back and look at that. Uh, now, are we done? No, when I ask that question, chances are we're probably not. Uh, what else could I do on this problem? Is you just fine? Sure, you can distribute that. You know why? Because I'm going to end up getting some like terms somewhere in this expression. So when I distribute, we'll get 25x plus 25. You see where that's coming from? 
plus, yeah, we're, we can actually combine these. Look at that. That's 10 square root of x plus 1. It's another 10 square root of x plus 1. I have like radicals. How much does that give me? 20. Good. Square root of x plus 1. The square roots don't go away. You need to know the difference between multiplying two square roots and adding two square roots. When you add the square roots, those are just like radicals. You don't do anything with them. When you multiply them, yes. It's very much like adding like terms and multiplying like terms. There's a similarity there. And then lastly, we have a plus 4. Tell me if there's anything else I can do. What do you think? Good. Yeah, those are like terms. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to write 25x. That's here. There's no like terms with 25x. I do have a plus 20 square root of x plus 1. That's this thing. Got that. But lastly, I have 25. 4, that will give me plus 29 at the back end of my expression. Do you think I can combine anything else besides those things? No. Then you're, you're done. They look kind of weird, right? Because you have some x's going on, you got some square roots going on, you got some whole numbers going on. That's typically what happens in these types of expressions, especially when you're multiplying uh, express, uh, these, these binomials that have two terms, one of which has a, a root and one of which doesn't. You get a lot of weird things happening on that. Are you ready to try some on your own? Yeah, I'm going to give you one like this. This will be the last type of example we do. This will probably be the most difficult type of multiplication that, that you, you're, you're shown. So if you can do this thing, you should be feeling pretty good about yourself right now. That's a good thing. So we'll start off kind of nice and easy. We'll build up to that. So on these things, we need to be sure that we are simplifying, though. Do not, do not just leave it as this. Okay? If you leave it as this, you're not all the way down. I need you to get all the way down to this expression. So here's your first one. Remember, I want to see all of the steps. I don't want you doing any of this in your head. Write out every single step that you do. So show the distribution in a step. After you show the distribution, then you use those properties of radicals that we've been talking about in this class. What you can multiply, what you can't multiply together, such as a, a constant in time of a, inside of a root, inside of that radical, and then we try to simplify. I'm going to pause you here. We're going to do the first one to make sure you're on the right track just to, to see if we're getting this okay, all right? So first thing, of course, we don't have a foil situation. We have one term outside of our parentheses. What this means and what I need to see from you, instead of doing this in your head, I need to see that you know you're distributing square root of 5 times 2 and then plus square root of 5 times square root of 15. Did you write it out like that? Yeah. Okay, two things you can multiply and get one root. Two things you can't. 
Which one can you multiply in and get one root out of that? The first one or the second one? Okay, good. So this, where we, we can't get the square root of 10 on that because the square root of 2 does not have a root. That was our rule, right? The product rule says that if you have two roots, sure. If you don't, only thing you can do with this expression is write 2 square root of 5. That's all you can do. The next one, however, you do have a square root and a square root. The same type of root, they're being multiplied. So in this case, you can get the square root of what is that? Where's your hand if you made it that far? Good deal. So one more thing you can do. Do you see it? 75, you can break it down and get 25 and 3, and you get 5. Good. You should end with 5 root 3 on that example. That's 25 times 3, square root 25 is 5, then the root 3, you leave that root 3. So here our ending answer is 2 root 5 plus 5 root 3. Show of hands how many people got that far. Okay, good. If you left it right here, remember that you are always looking to simplify radicals at the end of your problem. Okay, you're always looking to do that. So here you go, oh yeah, great, that's perfect. That's fantastic, go one more step. <laughs> Give me the square root of 75 into 5 root 3. Do you see how we're getting 5 root 3 out of that? Yes or no? Okay, 5 root 3, that's coming because this is 25 times 3. That gives you 5 root 3. Okay, I'll give you about another 30 seconds to wrap this one up, and then we'll work on that one. Remember, the, the writing out the distribution really, really, really helps on this. Write that out, that way you can see it. Instead of trying to picture it, you can see it on the paper. Write out the distribution. When I say write out the distribution, the first step that we need to be shown is that this actually means this times itself. That's what we, we mean to do. And that's why we actually have to distribute. There's, there's no way that an exponent can be, if you want to call it distributed, across addition that doesn't work. That's not one of our rules. So what we have to do on this is actually FOIL this. There's one, two, three, four expressions we're going to get. Just like we did on that example over there, only fortunately for us there's no number in front of these these roots. So it makes things a little bit nicer. Now when you distribute, what I want to see out of you is everything written out. So when you do the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2, I want to see that. That's our first expression. Next up we have square root of x plus 2 times 3. Show me that. Of course it's going to be a plus, positive times a positive. Right at the same time. There we go. That takes care of our first two multiplications. Then we have our three times our square root of x plus 2. And lastly, we're going to get how much? 9. We're plus 9. Not your head if you showed that. Are you all able to do your distribution? Yes? Left side? Okay. Do you see where it's coming from? Right. Now you need to be careful on what you can multiply, what you can put inside the same root, what you can't. If you have the same root, that means you can multiply the radicands. If you don't, well then you can't. So for instance, on this example, when I'm looking at 3 times the square root of x plus 2, I can't distribute that. There's no way, because this has a radical and this one doesn't. This has a radical, this one doesn't. That's a, that's a number, that's correct, that's, that's done. Over here, this has a radical, so does this one. They're the same radical. 
that means that you can actually multiply them together. If you do, you're going to get the square root of x plus 2 squared. Are you with me on that? This is where we get the square root times itself gives you the radicand. How much is this expression going to give you all together? Are you going to have a root? No. No, because you know that a square root times itself gives you what? Gives you another square root or gives you the radicand? Okay. So when I combine these two things here, I'm just going to get x plus 2. Now, I'm going to put that in parentheses to kind of show you that this whole expression gave you whatever's inside of that thing, okay? It's not just giving you x, it's not just giving you plus, it's giving you the whole thing. Plus, now we'll clean this up a little bit. Uh, again, can I make this 3x plus 6? Does that work? No, this is going to be 3 square root of x plus 2. This one's also still going to be 3 square root of x plus 2. And lastly, we'll get a plus 9 at the very end. Is there anything else that you can see that we can do? Okay, like terms. Let's talk about that. I see a couple like terms because I see a 2 and I see a 9. Just because that's in parentheses, it's actually not being multiplied by anything, right? That's a grouping parentheses. It's just saying, this was my polynomial that I got out of this. So really, those parentheses are not doing anything for us the only time that they would. It's like in this case, where I had a 25 in front of that. Then it distributed. There, there, was, there was no number in front of it. There was just a 1. So that's not going to change anything about that. So I do have a 2 and a 9 that I, I need you to put together. Okay, that's for sure. Also, is there anything else that I can combine? Yeah. Those are like radicals. Same root, same radicand. So our final answer here, and by the way, it doesn't really matter the order in which you write this. If you want to write the number first, fine. As long as you have all three of these terms I'm about to write. You do need the x. That's from here. I got a 2 and a 9. 2 and a 9 is going to give me plus 11. Got it. Lastly, I've got my like terms in the middle. How much is that going to give you? 6 radical x plus 2. Good. The radical or root x plus 2, that doesn't change. That's as far as you can go. One last question. Some people do this all the time. It kind of drives me nuts. Can you add these two things together? No. Okay. That one's got a root, one doesn't. Where's your hand feel all right with that example? Good deal. Last one you're going to get. Let's make this one solid. Do you guys need more time to do that? Let's take about 30 more seconds to try to wrap that up, okay? Does the order in which you put it matter? No. No, I, that's why I kind of sh showed that on both those. It really doesn't matter which order you do it. Uh, most of the time, I like to write like that because I like the constant coming last. And I like my x term first. But hey, that's just me. And it really doesn't matter. On this one? No, the goal, just the sure. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Ask it. <laughs> you know where, um, where you put um, the square root of x plus 2 up, up that one and then you put times 3? Yes. Why can you, can you put the 3 in first? Sure. Yeah, I was just showing you the order here. I, I wanted to make sure you knew where this was coming from, was this one times this one. Okay. But yeah, you can put the three first. Multiplication is commutative, right? It means it doesn't really matter which one comes first. Okay. So if you're going, oh, you know, I know these things are multiplied. Let's put the three first. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, we're about to get going on the next one. Now, there's no square up here, which means we don't have to write anything twice. It's kind of nice. But what it does mean is that we have to distribute just like we would here. It's going to be our FOIL method again. When you do this, go nice and slow. Make sure you have everything. Make sure you have everything appropriate. So in our case up here, by the way, do you have any questions on this one? Because I'm going to erase this. I need the room. Right. If we're going to distribute, the first thing we distribute here is our 3 root x and our 2, sorry, that's a z. I learned my alphabet real good. Uh, 3 root z times 2 root z. We're going to write that out. So far so good? You just do a distribution like you've been taught a long time ago. Next up, you're going to multiply a 3 root z times a 3. Are you going to get a plus or a minus out of that? Plus. Good, so positive times a positive. You're going to write out exactly what we just said. 3 root z times 3. Still okay? Yep. Okay. 
Next up, what are we going to have next? Minus, minus, okay, so we're doing this times this, that's where we're getting the minus from. 4 times 2 root z, 4 times 2 root z, writing everything out, we're still not doing it in our head. And lastly, everybody, we're going to get how much? Minus 12. Minus 12, very good. Minus 12. Okay, honest show of hands, how many people feel okay dis distributing like that? Yes, okay, good. You guys are here? It's all right. So, boom, 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 boom. We got everything. We're going to double check, make sure we haven't missed anything. Should have each of these parts listed twice. So, we should have two, three root z's. Yeah, we got it. We should have two minus four somewhere. Well, yeah, there's one here and there's one there. We should have two of these. Yeah, that's, that's right. And then we should have two threes. We have one there. We've got one there. It's within the 12. So, we have everything listed twice. We should have four expressions. Next up, we're going to multiply. Term by term, there's one, two, three, four terms. Multiply term by term to see what we can do according to our, our radical rules, our root rules. First is this one up here. We're going to have three root z times two root z. Tell me the number I'm going to get out of that thing. What am I going to get? Six. I'm going to get six. Just like I got 25 over here, I'm going to get six. Sure. Wait a minute. Hang on. Let's go slowly. Six, I got you. Where are you getting just the z? Shouldn't I have like a root z? Because it's, it's square two square root of z times, times each other, so they z squared. Okay, so square root of z squared. You with me? Mm -hmm. Square root of z squared, because you know that's a root times a root, right? Mm -hmm. You're not adding right here, you're multiplying. <laughs> so if you're, having, if you're struggling to see where in the world is this coming from, remember that this is multiplication, this is commutative, this is three and, and associative. So three times two, and root z times root z. You with me on that? You can do that. This gives you 6. This gives you square root of z times itself. Square root times itself is the square root of z squared. That's just z. That's where we're getting the z from. After that, well, it's kind of nice. We just have 3 root z times 3. How much is that going to give you? Then I know that's going to be minus 8 root z. And lastly, that minus 12. Well, that's not going to change. We've already done that math. We're going to clean up whatever we can. In our case here, we have a 6z. How much is this going to be when I combine my like radicals? Plus root z. Good, because we, we know a root z and a root z. Those are like radicals. Same root, same radicand. 9 minus 8 is 1. You're not going to put the 1, though. It's like writing x. You don't write 1x. You just write x. Here, you just write Square root of z. Minus 12, that's as far as you can go. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this multiplication? These two examples, this one and this one, if you can do those two examples, you should be feeling pretty good about that. Do you feel pretty good about this? Okay, those two examples will be on your test. Well, maybe not exactly those, but this is going to be like a 4, and maybe like a minus 1, and then like a 5 or something, okay? But it'd be pretty close. Yeah, when, I, when I say the same exact problem, I mean it's really similar. This is. All I'm wondering about is, so when we have x plus 1 parentheses, we have having parentheses because it was x plus 1 and not just like the letter by itself, like the z was. Exactly. So right here, you could really do that, right? However, in this case, it would make a difference because there's only one expression in that. Here, there was an x plus 1 in the parentheses. Uh, you'll notice that... I had the parentheses around this one as well, right? Yeah. Saying that that x plus 2, that came out of my square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2. That's the same thing we did over there. Okay. Yeah, good question. Any other questions before we move on? 